today we're privileged to welcome Julie Koner to Park Tudor. Julie is the founder and CEO of Voices of the Generations, which is dedicated to bringing the unfathomable experiences of the Holocaust to students and adults in a more personal story of a family not unlike your own, and thus perhaps helping you to better understand the atrocities and the loss. Julie is the daughter of Walter and Hannah Koner, both born in Teplitz, Schonau, in the former Czechoslovakia. Julie's mother survived four concentration camps during the Holocaust. Hannah and Walter reunited after the war, married, and moved to California. Together, they wrote their story in Hannah and Walter, a love story. And Hannah would be the first Holocaust survivor to bear witness on national television in a 1953 episode of the popular television series, This Is Your Life. For many American viewers, this was the first time they had heard firsthand accounts of the Holocaust. Julie herself has been a teacher in public, private, and Jewish religious schools in Los Angeles for 30 years. She has a BA in psychology and an MA in educational counseling. And in 1990, after the passing of her mother, she became compelled to share her mother's Holocaust story with others in the hope that many could learn from this story of love overcoming hardship, racism, deprivation, and the pain of war. For almost three decades now, Julie's story of growing up as the child of a Holocaust survivor has motivated other children of survivors to share their stories too. Her programs move and inspire people of all ages, but especially young adults, to look at adversity and the world around them in ways that are new. Please join me now in giving a warm Park Tudor welcome to Julie Cohen. Thank you. I'd like to just take a couple of minutes to talk to you a little bit about um, This Is Your Life, since most of you are not going to be familiar with this television show. It was produced 60 years ago when people were not talking about Holocaust in their homes, let alone on national television. It was the first reality television show that existed, and of course most of you are familiar with reality television shows. Uh, the way it worked was a um, host, his name was Ralph Edwards, would come into the audience, much like where you're sitting today, and uh, would typically go up to a celebrity and uh, present them with a book. It would say, this is your life, and the celebrity's name, bring them up on stage. And their life story would unfold by hearing a voice behind a curtain, and that person would try and guess who it is, and then the uh, guests would come out and they would talk about that person's life story at that particular time of their life. In 1953, eight years after the war, they surprised a guest, my mother, as the first Holocaust survivor on national television. You're going to see the original episode of this, uh, and then I'm going to share with you a couple of artifacts from that, that program, and we're going to then um, uh, have the uh, time for you to reflect on what you've seen and ask uh, questions about the show, about what it's like for me as a child of survivors to grow up uh, during this time period um, and anything that you care to ask. No holds bar, anything is fair game. So uh, in the interest of time, we're going to play this episode now. The episode is in black and white, which you're probably not familiar with as well. What you're going to see after the, um, the 53 episode is 20 years, uh, sorry, 30 years later, a two minute clip from a show called Sun Up San Diego. Um, when my parents wrote their book, Hannah and Walter, A Love Story, in 1984, my parents went on a book tour. And uh, as one typically 
does. Um, they were on various shows, and this particular show, I picked this clip because it shows how very different Holocaust was talked about uh, from 1953, and it's very important because the, the interviewer at that time asks my mother how she feels when Holocaust uh, deniers, which was the time period uh, when this was starting to rear its ugly head, says, um, how does it make you feel when people say that the Holocaust never existed? And we can talk a little bit about that as well um, after you see the, the clip that follows This Is Your Life. So why don't we um, take a look at both of these episodes now, and then I'll be back to answer your questions. Thank you. Um, I'd like to share with you real briefly a couple of things, and then we'll open it up for questions. Here's a copy of the original This Is Your Life book. I know it's hard with the lights. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but inside, I just wanted to share with you um, Here's the original script, and of course everybody's part was scripted except for who? Hannes, right? And um, I wanted to share with you one page that I thought might be of interest. Um, again, I know it's hard to see, but here is the page with an envelope on it. And this is the envelope that was um, given from Sergeant, sent out from Sar Sergeant Shukart to my father. Remember the part when he comes on um, and Ralph uh, talks to him and says um, that my mom wants to send a letter to her old fiance to say she survived. And he says, uh, well, who do I address it to? And my mom says, well, Walter Conner, and he lives on Sunset Boulevard. How many people have ever been to Los Angeles? Anybody? Oh, quite a few. Well, for those of you who don't know, Sunset Boulevard is one of our major streets. It's like 21 miles long. But she couldn't remember the address. So you can imagine how difficult it was to actually receive mail without an address. And it says, hold for Mr. Walter Conner, Los Angeles, USA, California, Sunset Boulevard, question mark. Well, it actually arrived at what was my uncle's office building, and he then sent it on to my dad, who was stationed at Radio Luxembourg. And then my dad took the letter and went on a search through Europe and found her in Holland. So it was nothing short of a miracle. Um, lastly, uh, this is the book that they wrote about their life story, which you just heard about on This Is Your Life. There are books out on the table. If you did not bring money to purchase one, uh, Dr. Duby was kind enough to um, say that you can sign your name on a list and um, still receive a book today as long as you bring money um, later on or your families will be billed for it and you can still receive a book today. So we're going to open up uh, for some questions for a few minutes and I'd like to invite uh, Dee up on stage as well with me um, who is also a child of Holocaust survivors. We're going to move over here, sit down, and uh... let me just do a, a brief introduction. Most of you, some of you may know uh, Mrs. Schwartz. She works in uh, learning support here at Park Tudor, uh, and she as well uh, is the child of survivors. Uh, and so I thought it would be uh, good, given that she's a presence here in our community, uh, for you to have a chance to hear a little bit about her, her perspective, as well as that of uh, Mrs. Cohen. So why don't we open it up. Why don't you raise your hand if you have a question for either of us, and we'll um, be able to um, spend a few minutes and shed some light on um, maybe perhaps different perspectives of growing up as a child of survivor and of my parents' story. So, who would like to start? If, if you have a question, why don't you come down, I'll grab a mic and you can ask a question on, on the mic. Or just real loud if you, yeah. and I can repeat it. I don't see a hand yet. You gotta, in this dark, it, it, the stand lights up. are bright so I can't see. Stand up. Oh yes, right here. Once again? How did your parents review the argument that the Holocaust never happened? 
how did they complete the argument? Um, they had, fortunately, my mother never had to. Um, unfortunately, she died almost 30 years ago, shortly after um, Son of San Diego was on. So she, she never had that, that opportunity, fortunately. How did you come to learn about your parents' experiences? Was it primarily them telling you, or did you learn about it from their book? I learned about it, um, well, two ways. First of all, going to Sunday school. Unfortunately, um, in the early 1960s, as I was growing up in the mid-60s, we were um, forced, and I use that word because that's how I felt, to learn about it through the black and white newsreels um, that were, that was how Holocaust was um, taught. But um, I was fortunate enough, and, and um, maybe do you can elaborate on her experiences in a minute, but um, I was fortunate enough to learn about it through my parents in an age appropriate way, from being able to ask, why don't I have grandparents? And, and they would tell me, and, you know, they died in Europe, they died during the war. And again, as I got older, I learned more and more about um, my family's tragedies. I was actually born in Vienna, Austria. Um, and my parents were able to get out uh, about, I would say, 24 to 48 hours before the Nazis actually uh, began breaking windows and damaging any business that belonged to Jewish people. I was told about this from the moment that I had any kind of an awareness of anything. My parents, although they did not get into the concentration camp, they certainly suffered under the Nazis, such as having their everything confiscated from their home. Um, my father was picked up by the Nazis several times and he was able to get away. Um, I knew about this from, I would say, the age of two, and they didn't stop talking about it. And um, as far as an extended family, I had none. It was just my mother and my father. My extended family, my grandparents, aunts, uncles were all murdered in the concentration camp. What's the most important lesson that we need to take from the Holocaust? One of the things that is very important to me is that, that it uh, is taught over and over, so we don't repeat this again. Education is key to everything. Uh, the other lesson is that there is a lot of good in people. But we don't hear about that quite as much as we hear about some of the atrocities that took place um, in Europe with our families. And yet there were people who spared Jewish people, who risked their lives to save lives. And I think that needs to be recognized. The other thing that I want to bring out is Adolf Hitler himself never killed anyone himself but he was willing to have other people do it for him. And that is the part that I have a great difficulty with, how easily people who were friends of Jewish families suddenly turned against them. I don't know what triggers that in a human being, but I try not to focus on that, because there is a great deal of good that took place. And so I can't color my whole life with what actually took place, I have to change the crayon and the crayon box and realize that um, there is good in human beings. And if we focus on that, perhaps the bad part won't return. I think it's very important that we take a look at our lives as we're growing up, um, your own world. And, um, you know, we're constantly looking at bullying 
and um, and we have to be upstanders. We we have to see when we see something wrong, whether it's in our schools, whether it's in our neighborhoods, even whether it's in our families, we have to stand up for it. We can't be afraid. Um, so we have to take what's happened um, on a large scale of the Holocaust. And I mean, it starts within our homes. It starts within our families, in our communities. And we need to, we need to make things right. And yes, I agree with you in terms of um, there were a lot of people, the righteous Gentiles, that, that made good, that helped Jews and helped people. So that's something we need to take away from that as well. Other questions? Yes. Real loud. How important do you think it was for you to communicate with your parents on this and the other? How important it was for me to communicate this? With, with your parents. Oh, with my parents? Oh, I, I think it was vital. I mean, as my mom said, if we don't pass it down to the next generation, how would how would we how would they know and how would we how would I, as a child of a Holocaust survivor, be able to share it with you? I mean, it's absolutely crucial. I mean, this I've made my life's mission. I've been doing it for almost 30 years since my mom's been gone. And yeah, it's not the same as being a Holocaust survivor, but in 10 years, there will not be a first-generation witness to come and tell you. How many people, by the way, have ever talked to a survivor? Good. If the rest of you get a chance, do it. It's invaluable, but if you don't have that opportunity, at least you have a child of a Holocaust survivor who's had that opportunity of growing up with a survivor. This is the next best thing. I mean, this is a piece of history. I think, too, this is really our mission. Um, Mrs. Conner does this with the full heart and, and with the purpose of making people aware of what took place. I, I'm doing this with a vengeance because I look at young people and I see this wonderful person in front of me and I hope never ever has to experience what way too many have. Interestingly enough, we are both only children. Um, you would think somebody that lost their whole family would have lots of children. But in my case, my parents were so traumatized, although you would never have known that, um, but they were. And so I am an only child, and I'm not only an only child of them, I am an only child of all their friends who had no children because they did go to the camps. And uh, so I was everybody's kid. And they told their stories over and over and over again, and that's what I listened to as I was growing up. Time maybe for one more question. Sorry. Uh, going off that, how do you shape what your experience is learning your parents, the educational opportunities you give, especially with your schooling career? Wait, say it one more time. I'm not sure I'm understanding so, the question. Uh, all that you've learned from your parents, how are you able to? Uh, do that in the form of school teaching. So not in the past 30 years where you said with the program, with the actual school teaching. Well, I created a curriculum and it's being utilized in schools with Hannah and Walter a Love Story. So many schools utilize my curriculum with the film, with um, the book, to teach Holocaust education. So that's how I use it. I think he was also asking, when, when you were teaching, how did um, the knowledge of what your parents had gone through shape the way you were a teacher prior to getting into the uh, Holocaust education? How did it change? I mean, it, 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 it was firsthand, so it just, it, it had a, a unique and personal approach to Holocaust education. More, uh, more intense. I don't, I don't know. Did you incorporate Holocaust education into your regular teaching when you were 
Um, well, I taught Holocaust, Holocaust education. Okay. So that's all I did. I mean, I taught Hebrew school Holocaust education. So, yeah. Yeah, and I teach at various schools. Uh, some of the days that I'm not here at Park Tudor, I've been invited to speak to uh, various schools throughout the city. And I have developed a PowerPoint that teaches some of this. And um, it, it's amazing how wonderful the students um, accept this and realize how different their lives are today than what went on 70 years ago. Okay, I think in the interest of time, uh, we'll, we'll leave it there.